had a really, really hard time with being different. And, um, you know, definitely got the being made fun of at school and being picked on. And um, so I pretty much grew up always feeling different, always feeling, you know, always wishing that I didn't look the way that I looked. Well, my name is Melissa Ann Konomis, formerly Melissa Chatham, and I am 34 years old. And among other things, I am a Korean adoptee, um, I guess on my way to reunite with my birth parents. I'm hoping that going will help me heal and will help me to feel better <laughs> about coming from Korea and better about the culture and just in general, but I have to be honest that I really, a lot of times I feel like I don't really have a home, you know, like I don't really totally fit in or identify with Americans. And I have felt so rejected all my life by Koreans that, you know, either place is, it's kind of a, a bittersweet, um, a bittersweet thing. So I think I'm afraid I'm going to get off that plane and, you know, see all these Korean people and uh, be in this country. And, and even though I'll look a lot like everyone there, I'm going to feel like a foreigner. It really doesn't feel real. And, you know, until I think I actually see her and touch her and, you know, hear her voice, you know what I mean? Then I think it'll, it'll really, it'll really start to set in. <laughs> Sometimes while I was searching, I would pray to be able to see you in my dreams. She never ever uh uh forget you uh the day from the day uh she let you go. It's over the thirty years. Always you you were in her you were in her well, thank you for not forgetting about me. I was afraid that you would. I know it's going to be really difficult and um, trying to maintain and develop a relationship when you're both on the other side, you know, you're on two different sides of the world. You don't speak the same language. You don't, I'm not going to get to see them frequently. And so it's kind of like, how do you build a relationship with someone when you don't have the kind of most basic things necessary to build a relationship, such as language and proximity, <laughs> you know? But I'm going to have to learn Korean in order to do that. And that's very overwhelming and it feels unfair. I, I searched for her because I wanted to know her and have a relationship with her. I just didn't expect that 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 would make me so emotional and that would make me so sad. Like I just really, oh, you have a translator and it works out great. But it doesn't work out great because there's so much that cannot be communicated. I myself have so many mixed 
and ambivalent feelings toward international adoption, you know, because here I am dealing with all the loss and the grief of it. Um, but at the same time, back then I wouldn't have wanted to grow up in Korean society because I would have been second class. You know, there's just still a lot of stigma and a lot of shame okay. attached like to it. <laughs> That's really cool that that we both really like mm. hydrangea. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. 엄마도 이 수고 좋아하고 자기도 수고 좋아하는데 이게 너무 참 좋대요. 둘이 똑같은 것도 좋아해. It's really hard to describe how it went. I guess meeting her was super emotional. Really, what started to overtake me was just joy. I think it all still feels very surreal. Like even in the 12 days that we've been here, it still feels very surreal. And even part of my motivation of wanting to search for her was to be able to tell her, you know, I'm, I'm okay and I don't want you to beat yourself up. You know, I want you to be able to heal and to forgive yourself. And so I think in that sense too, I, I wanted her to feel that from me.